To become all-around strong chess player, you need to be very good in tactics and the strategy. Knowing tactical shots and maneuvering in the chess positions in various positions is very important. Knowing opening theory is very, very important. But every part of the game, every aspect of the game has a lot to do with the pawn structure. And subject of our discussion is pawn structure. Pawn structure is the more, uh, is the most important part of uh, strategical uh, planning. Without correct pawn structure, you cannot get healthy positional game and you cannot construct good strategical plan. Okay, let's start discuss, discussing pawn structure. Everybody knows, and the, the number one thing you learn about pawn structure, it's good to have connected pawns and it's bad to have double pawns. It's good to have less pawn islands rather than more pawn islands. It's better to have less pawn islands. Well, that's not only, the, well, th this is all true, but there are a lot of exceptions. Concept of double pawns is very, very difficult concept. But before we get there, Let's discuss some kind of fixed pawn structures. What I mean by fixed pawn structures or frozen pawn structures, for example, e4, e6, d4, d5, e5. You see the pawns in the center, they are kind of frozen and you don't see the structure of the position in the center changing in near future. Well, another type of pawn structure, the frozen pawn structure is e4, c6, d4, d5, for example, e takes d, c takes d, bishop d3, knight c6, c3, knight f6, and bishop f4. You see, it doesn't look like black can go e5 anytime soon, and we have kind of fixed pawn structure. White is not planning on playing c4 either. So this is kind of pawn structure that will remain the way it is for a long time. Now, understanding where are the plans, where one side is playing on this position and where the other side is playing. What, is the, what are the plans? Generally, uh, these positions you can determine what side you have to play on by looking at the pawn structure. You see your pawns on b2, c3, and d4. They are placed on the same diagonal and they are going towards the king side. So white's play is on the king side. And black's pawns after e6, f7, e6, d5, aiming towards the king, queen side. So black's play is on the queen side. That's the general approach, and which is correct. Now, well, there are some exceptions, but let's first uh, learn the general rule. Now, suppose black plays bishop g4 now, and white goes queen b3. Now we are we're going to see very interesting aspects how pawn structure can change and it can change real quickly. If black plays queen b6. Now what is this pawn structure? White can take on b6 and double black's pawns and black can take on b3, well, if white leaves the queen on b3, black can take on b3 and double white's pawns. 
Now, who is this good for in the first case, and who is it good for in the second case? Let me explain you. That's the jet. That's where the rule of double pawns, which is one of the most difficult subjects of a pawn structure. It's a double pawns. When double pawns are weakness and when they are strength. It's interesting to notice whether white takes black queen or black takes white queen. In both cases, it favors white. If white takes black queen, you have black, you see black has double pawns. Black has double pawns that can't move. And after knight a3 and knight b5, white clearly has bad positions because knight has on b5 permanent square thanks to black's double pawns on b file. Now, in this case, and the pawns will be weak. Now, let's see if black takes instead. Knight d2, queen b3. Of course, white should take here. But we're talking structurally. Suppose it was white move and white didn't take, and black took on b3. Now, white has doubled pawns, and they are very good for white. So, how come we see double standard position here? Because white's doubled pawns are part of a pawn chain b2, b3, c3, d4. So what, how is it going to change the plan or the, the evaluation of position? After e6, white can go b4. White's next move is b5 kicking the knight from c6 square and for example if black played bishop e7 then b5 and after knight d8 maybe now pawn on b5 is very strong black has a weak pawn on a7 that determines white's clear positional advantage White does not have weaknesses. White controls most of the squares in the center because of b5 pawn. Knight can never come to c6. Knight is badly positioned on d8. And a7 pawn may become significant weakness. Well, after knight f3, maybe castling. And white can possibly double on A file. Of course, it's a long way to go, but those are the criteria which measures, the evaluates this position. So this is very interesting uh, concept. Actually, if we take different opening, we can take different opening. Uh, let's take D4, uh, D5, C4. E6, knight C3, knight F6, knight F3, or even bishop G5, bishop E7, C takes D, E takes D. And if white goes here, knight F3, well, instead of bishop E7, black could have done C6, and after knight F3, bishop F5, not allowing queen C2. But then white can go queen b3. Now, what is this position? Black can go queen b6. Now we have, we see totally reversed situation. If black takes white's queen, white is going to have weak pawns on b2 and b3. And if white takes black's queen, then black is going to take back having the same strength of a pawns allowing b5 and b4 in a future and white may have a weak pawn on a2 well in this this is good for black in both cases however the price black pays uh, to get favorable pawn structure on a queen side price they are paying for it is is 
bad pawn structure on a king side. White can play bishop takes f6, and now black is going to have choice. Black can take queen on b3, and when white takes back, then play g takes f. Now, this position is interesting. How do you determine what is strategical plan for white in this position? In those positions, black has definitely weaknesses on f7 and f6. And you see these double pawns, f7 pawn and f6 pawn, they are not part of the chain, pawn chain. So they are clearly weaknesses. The weakness of the pawns, when you have double pawns, remember, they are not weak only because you can attack them right away and you can win one of those, because that's not the case here, because uh, F file is not open and white is going to have very, very hard time winning any of F pawns. But the main problem for black in this position is that white is going to have squares on, um, on F file. For instance, after knight h4, and if black goes bishop e6, bishop d3, and maybe outpost on f5 for a knight, or maybe knight e2 and knight f4, outpost on f4. In both cases, this is possible because of black's double pawns. They don't have g pawn that can possibly uh, uh, cover f5 and f4 squares. So this is, now, you can search these positions and see a lot of games being played with this pawn structure. They were played when black took on b3 and when white took on b6. We had these positions too. And then black activates their pawns, b5 and b4, while white is trying to get some counterplay, some, uh, some um, squares on a king side. For example, on bishop g6, the possible move is even f4. Now white wants to go f5, and if black goes f5, then the bishop on g6 is very bad, and besides pawn on f5 will be lost after bishop d3. Now let's look for one very instructive um, example taken from one uh, from recommended by me one of the openings in our opening repertoire tape. E45, knight f3, knight c6, d4, e takes d, bishop c4, and here d6. Now d6 is not the main move. We know the main move is knight f6, which we're going to be analyzing also in a little bit from the point of your pawn structure. But now let's look, for example, for example, what's going to happen on d6. Knight takes d4, knight f6, and here white has two continuations. Knight takes c6, b takes c6, and e5, which is actually, it's not that clear, but it's a one of the ways to play for white. But we are not going to discuss now opening ideas. We're going to discuss the pawn structures. Try to make you all um, better familiar with a battle for a pawn structure. Knight c3, bishop e7 castle, black castles, white takes on c6, black takes on c6, and white goes bishop f4. Now, this is very, very uh, interesting position from a uh, standpoint of pawn structure. Now, what can white's plan be? White cannot just jump in its center and somehow take advantage of the position in its center? No. White cannot do that because black has no weaknesses. 
Black has doubled pawns c7 and c6. They are not weaknesses because c7, c6, and d6 pawn represent pawn structure, represent island, represent structure. So in this position, black must play knight d7. And here is why. Or they can play rook b8, bishop b3, and then knight d7, which changes very little. It's very, well, black pawns on c6 and d6, they control central squares. So here is the bad pawn structure for black, I can show you, which can happen. Rook b8, bishop b3, suppose white, black goes rook e8. Now, after e5, d takes e, and bishop takes e5. This position is really bad for black, because now you see the c7 and c6 pawns, they are extremely weak, and they are not part of the pawn structure. They are just isolated and weak pawns. They are isolated weak pawns. But when pawn was on d6, they are part of a structure. They control squares in the center. Now, let's see what happens after knight d7. Now, the way you should avoid certain pawn structures, that's why black played knight d7, well, it actually multi-purpose move. They stop e5, and they prepare, put their bishop on f6. And this bishop on b7 may come from, after bishop b7 and c5, may be activated on different diagonal. Blacks, uh, very difficult to take advantage of blacks double pawns, if it's possible at all. But they also serve the purpose why they are doubled. Because c7 pawn protects d6 pawn, and the other second C pawn controls some critical um, uh, central squares, not to mention then rook b8 also gets them a file. This is okay position to play for black. Definitely not okay to allow e5 and to exchange those pawns. Remember, double pawns in most of the cases are okay if they are not isolated and if they are part of the structure. Okay, now let's look at some positions that are very critical positions of the same opening where we can see advantages and disadvantages of certain pawn structure e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. This is now in the main variation. This is like a key of this strategy. Knight f6, e5, d5, bishop b5, and knight e4. And after knight takes d4, black's main move is bishop d7. And now white has to play bishop takes c6. And after pawn takes to c6, black uh, go, uh, white goes castle. And now uh, black can go bishop c5 or bishop e7. Now let's talk about this position. This is t position very, very rich with different pawn structures. It's very easy to get a real bad position for white. It's even easier to get real bad position with black. In both cases, that position can be done if one of the sides plays wrongly. For example, bishop to e7. Now we go f3. Main move in this position, actually, bishop to c5. But we are analyzing bishop to e7. Why bishop e7 and not c5? Because black does not 
want to block their C pawn. They want to be able to go C5 in a near future. So after bishop e7, f3, knight goes to g5, we go f4, and now black has choices to go knight e4 or knight e6. Now after knight e4, here comes very important point. Next move, next best move, uh, next move white does here is very very instructive so white has to build strategical plan well strategical plan their plan is to attack on a king side but there is bad knight on b1 bad bishop on c1 that needs to be developed and there is a very powerful knight on e4 what do we do here we have to exchange b1 knight for e4 knight. The way we do that, we don't go knight d2, we go knight to c3. And here is why. If black takes on c3, white takes on c3, we got double pawns as black has double pawns and our double pawns are isolated and they are not part of the structure when black's double pawns are part of the structure because there is d5 pawn but this position is very good for white and the reason is white much better off having two pawns on c2 and c3 then pawn on b2 and c3 well if we take pawns on b2 and c3 you see that black will be able to activate their pawns in its center with followed by bishop c6 and maybe queen d5 and that's where our double pawns they create problem for black's central pawns advancing knight b3 and you see black cannot make progress with their central pawns if they go c4 we go knight d4 back and after c5 knight e2 and now you see actually it's very interesting when black played c5 we didn't go knight e2 we went knight b3 but after c4, knight d4, and c5, now we go knight e2. So what does that mean? That with pawn on c7, we didn't go knight e2. And with pawn on c4, we do go knight e2. The answer to this question is this. We don't go knight e2 because of bishop b5. And then after knight b3, bishop to b5, is not such a good move because we can go simply rook f2 and when black castles bishop e3 attacking c5 pawn will create imminent problem for black they have bad bishop on b5 very strong knight on c5 and followed by f5 which will give black very difficult game very dangerous position so we go now these double pawns are good because after c5 knight b3 black has great difficulties advancing these pawns and creating counterplay and if they don't get counterplay real soon then suppose if they castle we're gonna go f5 and you see now queen g4 is a threat f6 is a threat black's position is very dangerous well here in the previous example i just showed you how bad it is to have isolated double pawns and now i am showing you kind of position when uh, double pawns even isolated pawns are good pawns to have well actually what is pawn structure understanding pawn structure there is 
no such a thing as a good pawn structure and bad pawn structure as a rule. No, there is no. It's all very conditional. And most of the time, isolated du uh, the double pawns are not good. Okay. Based on position, according to position, you have to see uh, when sometimes these double pawns may be good. Sometimes it's even better to have double pawns than not. But if we, if we start counting positions which, uh, in which cases isolated double pawns are good and in which cases they aren't, then I would tell you in 90% of the time isolated double pawns are not good to have. And this particular example that we have now on the board is uh, falls into this 10% uh, of the uh, positions where they, when they are good. Now we have to look at um, another pawn structure position. Uh, e5, d5 in this position, bishop b5, same opening, knight to e4, knight takes d4, bishop d7, bishop takes c6, pawn takes c6, and uh, castle for white. Now we look at different move, bishop to c5. Now f3, knight g5, and f4. In this position, as we know, and I already explained it in my, uh, on my opening videos, that uh, how do we play on knight e4, how do we play on knight e6. Now look at the same moves from the um, point of view of pawn structure. Now, after knight e6, we will go c3. And again, the reason why we play c3 and not bishop e3, see, we want to restrict, very important to restrict the movement of black's central pawns. c3 restricts this, and white wants to play f5. Bishop e3 does not. The reason why bishop takes d4, bishop takes d4, and c5. You see, very important to know. Now, is this pawn structure good or not? Now, pawn, uh, no, notice that black does not have a dark square bishop and black has a light square bishop. So they want to put pawns on a dark square. So after c5, bishop f2, d4, you see black is going to play bishop c6 next move and they're going to have very strong light squared bishop. So that's why white plays in this position uh, after knight e6 white plays c3 because now after bishop takes d4 and cd black cannot play c5. Well and another in another story, if black plays knight to e4, then we go bishop to e3, and if black castles here, here again we need to exchange black's very strong centralized knight. We can go knight c3 or knight d2. Again, the critical question of what pawn structure do we need. We have to go now knight d2 and if black played instead on a previous move bishop b6 then we have to go knight c3. Now how do you recognize what is the correct pawn structure? And here is criteria we go by. If we know one thing, we definitely don't want black to activate c6 and d5 pawns. That's very, very important. So in this position, when black plays uh, castle, 
we will go knight d2 because you see bishop on c5 does not allow black to play c5 and if black plays knight takes d2 queen takes d2 bishop b6 we don't let black move pawn pawns central pawns c7 c6 d5 c7 c6 and d5 is um, the connected part of a structure that will be frozen and we will never let black activate it by playing knight b3 followed by queen c3 and knight c5 it's good to have pawn on b2 and not on c3 now imagine pawn on c3 then queen e7 we need more support for the knight but if queen was on c3 knight can always be supported by a pawn so that's why pawn structure we want is with a pawn on b2 in other words not doubled pawns now we see the difference if black plays one different move bishop b6 we don't play knight d2 that's a bad move because we do, because knight is going to take on d2 queen takes d2 then black goes c5 and after knight f3 black plays d4 and after bishop f2 bishop c6 black has very strong light squared bishop and black has better position here so here we have to make sure that black's central pawns don't move make sure you keep a close eye on black's dark uh, black's uh, uh, the pawns are c7 c6 and d5 pawns black central pawns that they don't move for this reason we go knight c3 now if knight takes on c3 b takes c and c5 you see it's like we saw in one of the previous um, uh, examples those double those central pawns don't move after knight b3 black cannot go d4 thanks to our doubled c pawns so that's not good and if black plays c5 right away it's not going to change much because we can go knight to b3 and again if they take on c3 and we take back again those d and c pawn they are not going to move too far if black goes c4 we can go knight c5 and after queen e7 queen to d4 even queen takes d5 so black's pawn center is stopped and it's not going to represent any strength or any danger for white so that's well if you are asked what is the better pawn structure with pawn on c3 double pawns or with straight pawns a to b to c2 there is no answer it all depends where which piece stands before we establish position so again if black castles in this position we go knight d2 and if black goes bishop b6 we go knight c3 that's why i said that pawn structure the the rules about pawn structure cannot be generalized it's like it's all they can change from the uh, position of one piece because frequently it uh, decides uh, it determines the plan that one side may have so it position may be good or bad for one side because of the uh, the position of one pawn of the pawn structures so and again now let's look at another very common very common positions well maybe the most common uh, question in pawn structures is isolated central pawn well let's look at this opening this is that's a Karo Khan opening knight c3 e6 knight f3 bishop e7 cd and knight takes d5 
Now, this bone structure is probably maybe the most common bone structure in chest today. Well, you know, you can have this position with the bone structure where white has weak bone on D4 and also strong bone on D4 at the same time because controls number of central squares. And we have also, we can also have a mirror image of this position. In other words, uh, this weak bone black may have. For instance, well, if we, if we play this position, just a regular queen's gambit position, it can be the other way around. C5, E3, and knight C6, C takes D, E takes D, bishop E2, bishop E7, DC, bishop C5. Now black has a weak pawn on D5, isolated pawn, and the white has a square outpost on D4, but black has more space and better uh, piece placement. Now, these positions are very, very most difficult position to play and most important to understand because sometimes you're going to get these positions whether you want it or not for one side or the other side and you can get these positions from number of different openings. You can get it in Sicilian, you can get it in uh, Nimzo Indian, you can get it from Karo Khan, from Queen's Gambit declined, Queen's Gambit accepted. This is the most common pawn structure, isolated central pawn. And there are people, there are players that love to play with this pawn, and there are players that love to play against it. And all free, very frequently, it determines the placement of each piece will make any difference. Now, what will prevail? Playing for a weakness or neglecting the weakness, protecting and taking advantage of some uh, space and developing attack on a king side. It may work both, both ways. And uh, now we cannot keep talking about it because this is the subject that get, uh, can, may take several hundred hours and the people played all their life and even they're very far from perfecting it, from uh, playing it uh, flawlessly. Now, let's look at one position that can, uh, that can come from Karokan defense, e4, c6, d4, d5, ed, queen takes d5, Knight c3, queen a5. Now this, uh, d, um, and after knight f3, knight f6. Now this pawn structure after bishop d2, e6, knight e4, queen d8, knight takes f6, and gf. Now this is pawn structure that we got here some, from some weird uh, type of um, uh, Scandinavian or center counter opening. It frequently can be done by playing a regular, regular Karo can, e4, c6, d4, d5, knight c3, d, e, knight takes e4, knight f6, and after knight takes f6, g, f. Well, you can see that I used to play this all the time for black. And it's interesting. Is this a weakness really? Or maybe it represents the strength. It's both. It, now, white, what black wants to do, black has a weak pawn on h7, which is, can be taken advantage of only in the end game. And as you can tell, we are very, very far from the end games here. Um, if knight f3, then bishop g4 or bishop f5, and game can continue approximately like this, e6, bishop d2, knight d7, white castles, queen c7, king b1, black castles, and rook e1. Now, this is interesting pawn structure. Black has no weaknesses. This pawn structure with the pawns on e6, f6, and f5 
by no means represent any weakness. So what would white want to do here? The good thing for white, well, black may go f5. Good thing for white, if white goes c4 and bishop d6 and now queen e2. In position like this, black has pawn structure that controls almost every square in its center. How do, what do we do about it? The good move is d5. Now, it serves several purposes. First of all, we are attacking the pawn on a6, and black has to react some way. If black plays cd, cd, and ed, well, then they have immediate problem with the c file, but even if king was on b8 and we somehow can get the pawn back, then you see that f7 and f6 pawn are clear weaknesses. And if black reacts by playing e5, that creates new weaknesses, very close to the weaknesses we saw in a previous game in a, in a, a scotch opening where white occupied d4 and c5 square with minor pieces. Now they can go knight h4, followed by knight f5, where knight is going to uh, mount on f5 and will be a dominating factor in this position. And then queen e4, black has very bad structure. So knowing it is very important. Now black knows what they have to avoid and white knows what they have to try to do, what position they are aiming for. So this position, again, if black accomplishes f5, knight f6, knight e4, may be very good because they have better control in the center. If white does d5 and somehow forces black to push e5, it's going to backfire for black, this bone structure. So you have to know, you have to equip very well with positional ideas about the pawn structure. Okay, I have this and this pieces. I have dark square bishop. He doesn't have light square bishop either with pawn. So f5 square is very vulnerable. I want to put my knight on it so d5 is good. So ba based on what kind of pieces we have left on the board, I know what pawn structure I need. So pawn structure frequently, frequently is decided, decision on what pawn structure you need frequently depends on what pieces you have left and what weaknesses it may create in near future. Now, let's look at some position of uh, Queen's Gambit declined. Bishop g5, Bishop e7. E3, castles, um, knight f3, h6, bishop h4, b6, c takes d, knight takes d5, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, knight takes d5, and ed. And what I want to see here, castle c5, d takes c, b takes c. Well, we can get to this type of pawn structure many different ways, and we see that uh, black has pawns on c5 and d5. It's a great pawn center, controls a lot of squares in the center, but these pawns are standing, don't forget they are standing on the open files, d and c files. Now, what are they really? Are they strength? Or are they weaknesses? So, is this good or bad for black? There is no way of generalizing this either. Because if black manages to go knight d7 and a5 and rook c8, they're going to have very good grip on a queen side and control most of the uh, uh, center. So this position is simply not good for white because black is dominating. But on the other hand, if white manages somehow to put uh, substantial pressure on this 
D and C pawns, that may represent serious problem for black. Okay, let's look now at one of the games that I previously analyzed on one of my tapes. Uh, it's one, uh, I think it's positionally one of the best, uh, uh, better games you can uh, see between top two uh, players in the world. At that time, it was world championship match with, between uh, Bobby Fischer and Boris Spassky in 1972. C4, Bobby Fischer is white, E6, Knight F3, D5, that's the pawn kind of pawn structure we're going to get and you see what happened at d4, knight f6, knight c3, bishop e7, bishop g5, castle, e3, h6, bishop h4, b6, Fisher is white. This is all modern theory. It does not need to be analyzed, and we wouldn't want to analyze anyway because we are not going to discuss the opening part of this game. Bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, Knight takes d5, uh, ed, rook c1. Now, after rook c1, bishop e6, queen a4. White sees here that black must go c5, otherwise they have great difficulties concluding development. c5, queen a3, pinning the pawn. After queen a3, Rook c8 has to be played to protect uh, to protect the pawn. Bishop b5, a6, d takes c, b takes c, and castle. Here we go now. We have the pawn structure we just discussed. Now, white has some kind of a pressure on these pawns. And you see that black, ca white cannot just... Uh, put more pressure on C pawn and win this pawn. It's not as simple. You see how pawn structure, white wants to change pawn structure in the, uh, uh, during the game based on the position. You see, this actually interesting how um, it's uh, been done. After castle, rook a7, now black is threatening to take white's bishop since rook is protected on a7, bishop e2, knight to d7, and knight to d4. Uh, obviously, cd cannot be done because rook is hanging on c8 and queen is hanging on e7. And after queen f8, knight takes e6 and pawn takes e6. Now, what's the idea of giving this knight for the bad bishop on e6 and let black strengthen their pawn center. Now black has no weaknesses, very strong pawn center, and it looks like black is doing fine. And it's not exactly so. White has very strong bishop on e2. It does not look very strong now, but after e4, you see what, that's, that's the main plan for white. Now they, are, they want to change the pawn structure again. Well, what white is trying to do, they're trying to take on d5, and then in this case, these pawns will become easy targets for white's pieces. On the other hand, if black plays d4, which they did, then light square bishop becomes very, very powerful on c4. It's going to be a commanding force, bishop coming on. So white played f4 to stop black from playing e5 or maybe knight e5. White plays f4 and after queen e7, e5. This is a total victory uh, in a strategy, and basically this, uh, vict this uh, determined by the pawn structure that White created. You see, c5 and d4 pawns will never move. White will go bishop on c4. Knight on d7 is extremely 
restricted with the whites E5 and F4 pawn. E6 pawn for black is weakness. And after bishop C4 and F5, on top of everything, white has very good chances for direct attack. What happened here after e5, rook to b8, bishop c4, king to h8, and queen to h3. You see white is attacking e6 pawn, and after knight f8 and b3, the position is totally lost for black. White is imminently coming f5, definitely uh, that's going to create, that's going to open the f file and if you just compare the minor pieces, black's knight on f8 versus bishop on c4, that is going to open after f5, you will see that white has a murderous attack. Well, just uh, if you want to see the the rest of the game, just to show you, a, a5, f5, ef, rook takes f5, knight h7, rook f1. You see pawn structure determines, well, let, let uh, white get powerful attack on a queen side and determines the uh, course of the game. So now, after queen d8, queen g3, this position could have been won many different ways. Rook e7, h4, restricting the movement of the knight on h7. Rook b to b7, e6. And after rook b to c7, queen e5. And after queen to e8, a4. And in this position, black uh, resigned because actually black did not resign, black still made few moves, but I think they could have resigned right here because there are no moves that can possibly make. Queen d8, rook f2 was played, and queen e8, all, all black can do just sit and uh, wait what is going to happen to them, and nothing good is going to happen in this position. And uh, rook 2 to f3, queen d8. It was slight time pressure. Bishop d3, queen e8. Queen e4, knight f6. Rook takes f6. Pawn takes f6. Rook takes f6. And you see the total spectators, both of black's rooks and queen on e8. They are spectating what's going to happen to their king. And after king g8, bishop c4 and king h8, queen f4, black simply gave up. The last few moves were not um, very important to observe, just to uh, emphasize uh, the um, total triumph of uh, black, uh, white strategy. Now, it, this, you, you could tell, don't get wrong impression, that the way white won this game in the end, Oh, well, maybe I cannot uh, be as precise. No. Let me tell you this. I would have played it differently. A lot of different players, strong players, could have played it differently. And there were way too many ways for white to convert that position into a win. We can go on and on and on endlessly. I would say at least maybe like a 10 different ways this game could have won, could have been won. So... Fisher only had a chance for one way, and that's what he executed. So that was very well played game, and very interesting understanding of a pawn structure. Now, taking the way Fisher did when he uh, played e4 and allowed Black to play d4, it's not always that good. So what notice that what he did. When he played e4 and he forced black to go d4, he had good grounds for it. And, for it. and good grounds were that he made his bishop powerful, powerful piece and he totally shut off the uh, activity of black's knight. That decided the uh, 
game. That was decisive in the game. 